Welcome back. Today we'll be talking about hereditary hyperbilirubinemias. It's a common target of questions and it's fairly simple. So let's break it down. First, let's understand what is bilirubin and what is the normal pathway for bilirubin. The first step is the lysis of RBCs. And as we know, RBCs have hemoglobin, which has heme. So when the RBC is lysed, they will release heme into the blood. Heme will be broken to bilirubin by the enzyme heme oxygenase which will be further broken down to unconjugated bilirubin, also called indirect bilirubin. The indirect bilirubin will be carried by albumin to the liver, and inside the liver will be conjugated using the enzyme UGT. Now the conjugated bilirubin is found inside the liver and it cannot leave the liver, and so it will be excreted in the bile. And now let's talk about the diseases that you'll need to know for your step 1 exam. The pathophysiology behind Gilbert syndrome is the immaturity of UGT. So the UGT enzyme which conjugates bilirubin is actually found inside the liver, though it's immature. So the enzyme works, but it works slower than normal. These patients will be largely asymptomatic until they do some exercises or undergo some stress. This stress will result in overwhelming of the UGT enzyme, which will increase the unconjugated bilirubin. The classic scenario for step 1 that they love is somebody who went hiking for 2 days and then came back with jaundice. And they'll ask you about the diagnosis or the pathophysiology. So remember that Gilbert is the good type. krigler nijar syndrome is caused by absent UGT enzyme. So this patient will be unable to conjugate bilirubin whatsoever. And so we will have increased levels of unconjugated bilirubin. In Dupin syndrome, the enzyme is present and functioning, although we cannot excrete bilirubin. So we will have increased conjugated bilirubin. And because all of this bilirubin is going to be concentrated in the liver, it's going to cause dark liver appearance, which is highly characteristic. Rotor syndrome is a mild form of doping syndrome. And here are some more informations that I fear are important. So krigler nijar syndrome has actually two types, type 2 being the milder form. And giving barbs for a krigler nijar syndrome will actually relieve the symptom by increasing UGT synthesis. All of hereditary hyperbilirubinemias are autosomal recessive diseases. And you should also remember the values for the conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin levels. And here's a small quiz for you. So try to match the following diseases with the following characteristics. And here's the right order. Alright guys, that's everything I've got. Hopefully I made this easier for you. Thanks a ton for watching and I'll see you guys later.